Hi, this is Matt Kuntz. I'm the executive director at NAMI Montana and I'm going to present to you 16 slides to update everyone on the Montana's 872 commission um, as it moves into the home stretch and give you a feel for where you can have your voice heard based upon what they're looking at right now. First of all, 50% of politics is timing. And two critical time periods coming up are May 20th. There's going to be a commission meeting where DPHHS will present and the commission will discuss a draft of the final report. No receive public comments. So get your thoughts in before May 20th, get them in at May 20th. And then later, June 28th, the commission is going to meet, I believe it's their final meeting, and DPHHS will present the final report to the commission for adoption. So definitely weigh in before June 28th, your last chance, certainly somewhere around May 20th and before June 28th. Thoughts to keep in mind from our perspective, this feels like about a four year process that began with the last legislative interim committee that really dug into the challenges facing Montana's mental health treatment system. And then Governor Gianforte during the budget process allocated you know, $300 million towards improving that system. And then they developed this committee as a way to help decide where those funds went. But if you look at, if you remember back to the last interim committee, they looked at certified community behavioral health centers, which was a way to improve the funding to, for sustainable care in our communities. And those have integrated behavioral health. They also have a lot of great case management care navigator stuff, which you'll see throughout these two presentations. And then there's the community crisis bids, which was a huge part of what we worked at the last interim. And then also what's being presented by these two different consulting groups is critical. And then finally, there was enhanced payments for in-state providers to care for youth at risk of being sent out of state. So really critical time at the last interim, really important in this work as well. Uh, so it's cool to see the continuity. It's important to see the continuity. If this was different, if this was bizarre or whatever, it wouldn't work. So it's really great to see the interim committee of the legislature studied it, uh, 872 commission, two first rate consulting firms study it. A lot of the same things rose to the top. Um, another thing to keep in mind is with how are these going to be funded? You know, the 872 commission was granted one time only money in some complicated ways, but really one time only money. And we're going to have to fight for sustainability for all of these programs. That was one of the reasons NAMI Montana mentioned developing a trust to support these programs. So we'll get deeper into it, but began by realizing this was guided by two really important consulting firms that were brought in by Montana DPHHS to look at this for the 872 commission. One of them is Guidehouse. The other one is Alvarez and Marshall. So I'll start out by presenting the Guidehouse report that was presented at the last 872 commission meeting. Um, Guidehouse gave 10 recommendations to address Montana's behavioral health system challenges. And I did a lot of copying, pasting, trying to be as consistent as possible to show you exactly what they said. So you didn't take it as my interpretation, unless I do interpret some of it. Uh, the first one, they're looking at the care continuum. And they want to develop a statewide comprehensive care management program. Um, so across Montana, statewide comprehensive care management program. And it's hard to tell what this means. Clearly, some people are going to be thinking manage care. Maybe that's what it means. Hopefully, it'll be fleshed out in the fuller 
report if they decide to move forward with it. Second one, uh, enhance existing infrastructure and resources. So certified behavioral health centers, school-based programs, mobile support, a lot of what we had looked at before at the interim. So a lot of consistency around developing what we already have. Third, for the care continuing, incorporating culturally relevant care protocols. Uh, tribal and others, always important. Fourth, expand the use of integrated behavioral health care models. And again, coming back to certified behavioral health centers and using FQHCs and stuff like that. That's where integrated care mostly happens in Montana uh, for our behavioral health population. And then spread awareness for Medicaid reimbursement for mobile crisis teams. This is a recent state plan amendment and we need to utilize it as much as possible. Number two, access. Expand community-based crisis receiving and stabilization centers. Still critical, still important. We've lost so many of these since, gosh, in the last 10 years, and we need to really build them up. Uh, and then enhance access to comprehensive behavioral health care campuses, especially in the East, to improve transition between inpatient, subacute, and outpatient care. This was a little bit confusing, and you could read the report to understand it more. Um, but it really, from our perspective, what we saw was comprehensive hospital-based healthcare campuses that probably look a lot like the Providence Center where you're able to get inpatient, subacute and outpatient care or short air children's hospital. Um, interesting for where it is in the East, you know, Glen Glendive has done amazing work on their crisis care in their hospital. And, you know, is that the model that we need to look at? Um, certainly something like that is what they're talking about. Increased capacity of in-state residential treatment and group homes for youth to reduce out-of-state care. Again, just like the interim committee last time, um, this is a problem that needs to keep being worked on. And we need enhanced rates to make it happen, especially in times where it's hard to find staffing. Number three, for that staffing, uh, workforce. Create a dedicated recruitment and retention unit within state government uh, to support expansion and homegrown behavioral health workforce. Uh, we, we were kind of also hoping that as part of this, the commission would develop a clinical psych program in Montana. That didn't come out, but uh, here is a few of the workforce things that they're working on. The next one is um, using ancillary providers and expanding the support. So peer support specialists, community health workers, family caregivers, these are really important. This is things that we've worked on for years, and it's just exciting to see the state and DPHHS and these consultants saying the same thing. Double down on peer support and community health workers. Okay, so that was Guidehouse. This is the Alvarez and Marshall proposed recommendations that they worked on with DPHHS and they presented them kind of a dual way at the last committee meeting. And again, these are in a lot more depth if you look at the com commission webpage. Um, here's a broad take, the 16 behavioral health recommendations aimed to improve case management by enhancing a person's ability to navigate the continuum and get the right care at the right time, at the right place. So back to case management and the importance of case management. Expand the number and kinds of services offered across the continuum to better serve the needs of Montanans. And then number three, incentivize people to join and stay in the behavioral health workforce, ensuring greater stability and higher quality of services. So again, a ton of consistency from the interim to this current commission, which is really hopeful because we're not dealing with a lot of new weird ideas and a lot of consistency between the two different consultants reports. 
Uh, there was also developmental disabilities recommendations, which we're not going to go into as in much depth, but I will cover um, what they said about them. They're going to expand access points to the service system to better support the needs of families, modernize the funding of services to support more person-centered services while supporting service provider flexibility and sustainability, expand the array of services to provide more options to better align with the needs of people with developmental disabilities, you know, going back to crisis care and some of these things that we just don't have, but they're essential when people need it to be able to stay in their communities and a lot of other types of care. So we'll go specifically highlighting into the behavioral health recommendations. First one was to enhance targeted case management program and then develop a targeted case management training program, implement a care transitions programs. Again, all of those things working inside the care system to get it to work better. And a lot of them really work well within the CCBHC system or maybe in between the institutions and the clinical care providers like the care transitions, making sure you, when you get out of Montana State Hospital that you really succeed in your community and you start off well. Next, enhance 988 call center coordination and support capabilities. Another great idea. 98 has been very successful in Montana for years and really making it better is wonderful. Next, expand mobile crisis response to additional regions. Again, this is working. This is important. Let's make it better. And then introduce new crisis stabilization and receiving center services. So back to the last interim, crisis beds, need crisis beds. We went after this in a number of different ways, and we're really hopeful something comes out of this, especially crisis bed provider rates without those, we don't have crisis beds. Uh, next one, expand the scope of certified adult peer support program. NAMI's been deep pushing that for years and we're excited to see it continue to grow. Next up, increase support for people with serious mental illness and or substance abuse who are experiencing homelessness. Um, the PATH program is really amazing and love the concept of doubling down on that and some of the other services. Launch a media campaign to raise awareness and reduce stigma. Next, reduce transportation related barriers to care. This is a huge thing for Montana. Um, we, we work on this for um, our county resource guides and um, it's hard because you go down to the bottom of those county resource guides for transportation and how you get to places, and there's not much. I can say as the person that often types that in, it's hard to find. Next, uh, expand the family peer support program. Again, family peers have been an important part of our system for years, and finding a way to incorporate them more specifically is a great idea. Next, redesign rates to improve in-state youth residential services. Again, the same as the interim. Incredibly important and something we've been working on for years and need to get right. Same as school-based behavioral health initiatives. This has been a major effort for years by a lot of different folks, including the Montana Healthcare Foundation, and we're excited to see it continue to grow. Last three is incentivize providers to join the behavioral health workforce, expand training content available to behavioral health workers, and assess the feasibility of establishing a community health worker program. So one of the things that NAMI Montana is going to be working on in the next legislature is coming up with a bill to have community health care workers be able to be paid by Medicaid, and then we'll work out the details with the department and the community health care worker 
organizations after that. So, but we'd love to get it started. So this is everything that they presented. This is the entirety of what's being considered by the 872 commission um, based upon those two consultant reports as they were presented at the last 872 commission meeting. So we do really need people to make your voice heard. Um, let the commission know what you feel about, know what you think is important, because now's the time uh, to let them know. Once they do the report, then the details will go to the legislature and we'll see what gets continuous funding and how and the governor, Gianforte, will make his calls and there's a lot of different things, but you need to weigh in right now uh, if you want to weigh in because after May 20th, it's going to be harder and harder and then you're going to have to wait until the legislative session. So uh, we're really grateful to 872 commission, the consultants and DPHHS and everybody that's worked on this. Um, so please dig into it and let them know what you think. Thank you.